Who's that? Einstein. Albert Einstein, 1905. Albert, uh, <laughs> Albert Einstein. Nineteen oh five. Albert Einstein was working as a patent clerk in a Swiss patent office. He was not employed as a physicist anywhere. He was reviewing patent uh, applications for validity, and he published five papers, all about physics. I'm not going to talk about all of them. I'll talk about uh, maybe one and a half. Let's see. Uh, we're definitely going to talk about the concept of the special theory of relativity. In fact, we're going to prove one tenet of the special theory of relativity. Uh, oh, actually, we'll talk about the photoelectric effect. One thing that he did was to uh, come up with a description of the photoelectric effect, which is something that people didn't understand. Uh, you have examples of it. For example, your garage door opener is a switch that um, you have a light beam of light going to a photosensitive cell, and it is converting that to current. It's a photoelectric. If it then no longer has that, it no longer is, is created current. It's a switch. It's basically a light switch. He great came up with a physics description of the photoelectric effect, which proved that light was a particle, which is always great. You said it proves that light is a wave. That's definitely true. Under some circumstances, light acts like a wave. Under other circumstances, light acts like a particle. It is called wave-particle duality. Light is both a wave and a particle at the same time. I'm not going to get too much into that today, but that's fine. Okay, so we're going to instead talk about Albert Einstein's special theory of relativity. What we're going to do is we're going to walk our way through the one of the basic tenets, which is the concept of time dilation. The fact that the faster you move, the slower time is. So it starts with the basic concept of a light clock. A light clock is composed of two mirrors. And light is going to be sent across the mirror. It's going to go straight across and come straight back. The distance between the two mirrors is going to be a distance L. One tick of the light clock is going to be the time it takes for the light to go there and back again. Therefore, what class is the total distance traveled by the light during one tick? 2L. 2L, right, because it's going to go there and back again. So the distance traveled is going to be equal to 2L. Now, uh, speed equals distance over time. Uh, I'm going to be using a V to represent speed here. It's um, in the long run much easier because I'm going to be using V quite a bit. So speed equals distance over time. So in this particular case, that's going to be equal to 2L divided by the time. Therefore, the time is going to be equal to 2L divided by the speed, right? Just rearranging for the time. Therefore, the time is equal to 2L divided by, well, that speed is the speed of the light. So it is 2L divided by C. And this is generally called T naught, where T naught it has a specific name. It is called the proper time. And I do want to make sure I get the definition here. The proper time is the time measured with a single clock at rest in the frame in which the events take place. Okay, so proper time, the time measured with a single clock at rest in the frame in which the events take place. And that is right here, we have a mirror, it's at rest. This would be the same thing if I'm moving with the rear mirror, for example, on a train, I would still, that would still be the proper time because the, it would be at rest with respect to me. I do want to go through, um, I'll do that in a little bit. Let's now take this, and we're gonna take the mirror and put the mirror, the light clock, 
on a train. The train is going to be moving to the right at uh, the velocity of the train is going to, I'm going to set as V and it's going to be moving to the right. So we now have a slightly different observation of the light clock. We have still two mirrors. But now because the light clock is moving to the right, the light isn't going to, according to you, the stationary observer, go straight there and back again because the whole apparatus is moving to the right. The light instead is going to be projected at an angle like this and come back at an angle like this. Note, again, according to me, the stationary or the, the observer on the train holding the light clock, it's still going to look like this. But according to you, the stationary observer, as the light clock is moving to the right, it's going to look like this, where L is still the distance between the two mirrors. We'll define H as the hypotenuse of that triangle. So now, instead of having the light travel a distance to L, Class, how far does the light travel? Try that again. How far? 2h, because it's now going to travel along the hypotenuse of the trunk. So what we need to do is we need to figure out what that distance h is, because distance is going to be equal to 2h. Therefore, we need to figure out the hypotenuse of this triangle. Well, we happen to know Pythagorean's theorem. We have a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where c is going to be the hypotenuse. Clearly, one of the two sides is L, which we're going to square. But we need to figure out this side of the triangle right here. OK. Well, we know speed equals distance over time. Therefore, distance equals speed multiplied by time. Right? Well, this time is actually going to be half of the time it takes for one full tick. So this distance here is going to be velocity times time divided by 2, because it's half the time. Right? Notice one thing that we're doing here is we're saying delta t, which is equal to time final minus time initial. We're setting time initial equal to 0. Therefore, the delta t is equal to time final minus 0, or delta t equals time final, which we're just defining as time. It's a rather standard thing to do, which is set the initial condition equal to zero. Therefore, uh, it makes the algebra easier throughout the course of the whole problem, which you'll find out is very helpful shortly. So we have then A. This side of the triangle is velocity times time divided by two. Remember that velocity there is the velocity of the train. So we have the velocity times the time divided by 2, this whole thing squared. Therefore, the hypotenuse is equal to the square root of velocity times time divided by 2 squared plus L squared. Remember, we wanted the distance, which was 2 times the hypotenuse, so we actually have 2 times this equation. OK. So we have D, the distance. But we've got velocity equals the distance divided by the time. So the time is going to be equal to the distance divided by the velocity. The distance in this particular case, we just figured out, was 2 times that hypotenuse, or 2 times the square root of v times t over 2, that quantity squared, plus L squared. All of that by this velocity is the velocity of the light. So that is our c. So again, I'll just rearrange. We draw this equation so we can see it. The time is equal to 2 divided by c times the square root of v uh, times t over 2, this quantity squared plus l squared. So far, we're working on proving uh, Einstein's special theory of relativity. Have I done anything other than algebra and Pythagorean theorem? No. And the definition for speed. That's it. I'm going to now rearrange this equation, again, just using algebra. Let's take and square this whole equation to get rid of the square root. We have time squared equals 4 divided by the speed of light squared multiplied by the quantity the velocity times time divided by 2, that quantity squared, plus L squared. Let's multiply both sides by 
the speed of light squared, we get time squared times c squared equals 4 times, and let me square this whole thing, so we'll have the velocity squared times squared over 4 plus 4L squared. Multiply through by 4, we get time squared times the speed of light squared equals velocity squared times time squared plus, I'm sorry, I got overexcited with the, overzealous with the 4, plus 4L squared. Okay, uh, to get the time squared together, let's bring the velocity times time squared over to the other side. We get time squared times speed of light squared minus the velocity squared times time squared equals 4 times L squared. Combining like terms here, we get time squared equals, or multiplied by the speed of light squared minus velocity squared is equal to 4 times L squared. Therefore, the time squared equals 4 L squared divided by C squared minus V squared. Now I'm just going to take the square root of the whole equation. I get time equals 2L divided by the square root of c squared minus v squared. Now, square root of c squared minus v squared. I need to work with this. This is a rather awkward equation to work with. So I'm just going to pull out the square root of c squared minus v squared so that I can rearrange it and substitute back in. Square root of c squared minus v squared. Now, I'm going to multiply this by the speed of light divided by the speed of light. Why can I multiply it by c over c? Justin? It's just one. You can multiply anything by one. Okay. I'm going to leave the first, the yeah, numerator as c, but I'm going to multiply through by the denominator here. So I'm going to have the square root of c squared minus v squared divided by c squared. When I bring it underneath the square root, I have to square the speed of light. I can then um, have this be c, the speed of light squared divided by the c of speed of light squared minus the velocity squared divided by the c of speed of light squared. Class, what's the c squared over c squared? One. So this is equal to the speed of light times the square root of one minus v over c, that quantity squared. So notice, all I did here was show that the square root of c squared minus v squared is equal to c times the square root of one minus v over c, that quantity squared. So what I can do is I can substitute in for the square root of c minus v squared in this equation. So now I have time is equal to, uh, let's see, 2L divided by c times the square root of 1 minus v over c, that quantity squared. Therefore, t is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus v over c, that quantity squared, times 2L over Just so you know, this is the Eureka moment. This is where somebody yells, oh! And says something after that. Uh, it's, it's the thing that comes after that's important. Yes? Um, T not is 12 over C. What I did right here with all of this algebraic manipulation was to try to isolate the proper time. 2L divided by the speed of light. So what we have here is the time measured by the stationary observer and the time measured by the person who's moving, which is the proper time. So we have t, the time measured by the stationary observer, is equal to gamma times t naught, where gamma is equal to 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus v over c squared. And t naught is the proper time as defined at the root mean. Ladies and gentlemen, people, you have derived one of the pieces of the special theory of relativity, the concept of time dilation.